is exactly 15 minutes after um, 8 a.m. You're live on the Super Morning Show on Radio Justice 98.5 FM. I told you we have our friends from the Africa Skills Hub. We'll be talking uh, about uh, their women uh, empowerment initiative, uh, that the Women's Entrepreneurship and Livelihood Initiative, Willie. Uh, we have in the studio with us this morning uh, Uncle uh, Lansab Rashid and Auntie Anatu uh, Ben Lawal. Uh, good morning, lady and gentleman. Yeah, good morning. Uh, Rashid, how far? Yeah, cool things, bro. Uh, yeah, everything is good. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fasting today? No, I'm not fasting today. You didn't cite the crescent? I didn't see any moon, so... <laughs> 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 uh, that's fine. Yes. I'm not also fasting, anyways. Okay. Uh, so we belong to the same squad. Shame on Awesome. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us about the uh, Africa Skills Hub. Okay. So Africa Skills Hub uh, was formerly known as uh, Africa Internship Academy. Uh, it's been in Accra for over uh, eight years, mm -hmm. but then um, recently. Uh, we changed to Africa uh, Skills Hub. We're basically a, a, an organization, a social enterprise, which is into uh, building capacity skills for youth out there. So normally we organize trainings in uh, digital media, uh, in data science, mm -hmm. in uh, artificial intelligence, in coding for young people so that they can get skills, job ready skills, so mm -hmm. that when they get into the uh, job market, they'll flourish. Mm -hmm. And for those as well who also want to start their businesses, they can also come to us to give them entrepreneurship training uh, and all that so that they can get uh, livelihoods and empower themselves both financially and other aspects as well. Mm -hmm. But we are more tuned into uh, women, you know, these days women are more marginalized and everything. Mm -hmm. So we are more focused on women, trying to get women empowered in the mm -hmm. way men are. We try to make sure that women are there and maybe go further than that. Mm -hmm. So we just set up an office in Tamale here. Mm -hmm. uh, we are still very young, so I think one month or so. Yeah, so in Tamale, in Tamale, mm -hmm. our Tamale hub, and uh, we have a program that's Anna to a very interesting program. Those, uh, she's the brainchild behind the program, so mm -hmm. she threw more light on that. It's it's a very important program that I actually fell in love with when I heard it from her mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the team from Accra. Mm. Yeah, and that's the uh, women's entrepreneurship and uh, livelihood initiative. Initiative, yes, mm. that is mm. it. Yes, and Tiana, to tell us uh, mm. about uh, this initiative. Uh, about the program. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the women's economic and livelihoods initiative, um, it's a result of many years of not just myself but the leadership of Africa Skills Hub in de defining and asking the question: mm. Why is employment so difficult for? Our young people and what are the looking at the statistics and looking at the levels and now we now have the COVID, which has come to also impact us in a very negative way and has reduced uh, increased the level of ma marginalization for young women adult uh, young adolescent young girls and, and young women so we've been pondering this question and one of the things that uh, we also looked at our cognizance of the fact that entrepreneurship does exist in this country and we're trying to train young people but sometimes we have not looked at the local areas that can also be affected. Not everyone is highly educated. Not everyone is uh, involved in tech. Not everyone is uh, involved in all these other areas that uh, we have looked at in the last few years. And we are known as uh, incubators for mm. running. I'm not saying those are not important, mm. but also localizing it. Because we have always understood that uh, our communities have solutions. They existed way before uh, 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 the advent of... Uh, what we call modernism mm. and so what are some of those tools that we can how can we harness the past and then use the futuristic skills and combine them in order to be able to produce solutions so when we look at COVID and we look at the div the devastations has wrought in its week poverty is a huge ex you know example businesses mm. livelihoods and also we look at the fact that uh, sexual and gender-based violence has also increased greatly so this is also a project that is mainly looking at that aspect and when we talk about sexual and gender-based violence it doesn't necessarily mean there are two extremes of it, so mm. there's a variety across the spectrum. So yeah. we can talk about uh, domestic violence, which is existing. The numbers have risen, mm. uh, sometimes up to 100% in some areas, mm. simply because people are at home, 
they frustrated children are not going to school yeah. men have lost their jobs the women you know there's the, this whole issue around that so we look at what would be an easy solution that we can present to communities and that we can bring into food since our asian days has always been something that brings us together mm-hmm. as a community we, we meet together to eat we meet together to share food um, even we look at Ramadan, we end up uh, at the end of Ramadan, we end up feasting together, etc. Mm-hmm. So it's always been a huge connection. The other aspect of it is that it's a low hanging fruit. Mm-hmm. It is easy to support uh, young women and girls to go into that industry as opposed to maybe a tech uh, industry that takes uh, a lot of money and a lot of resources and a lot of uh, training, as you may say. So we, we looked at the fact that uh, we could use food as an enabler. Um, a lot of young girls here are involved in the food sector, mm. and that's across the value chain. So mm. it could be production, it could also be um, beverages, it could mm. also be preparation of food, it could be an eatery. So the variety of it yeah. could be uh, people who have various, you know, so we have people who have sugar and are selling those, we have people who are preparing food. So across the value chain, there are so many of them. And so mm. we thought, oh, okay, let's go for that and let's see how we can empower. And the response has been amazing. So mm. we launched this call and then uh, the response has been amazing. We have a few hundred women who have come and have applied, although mm. we are only seeking a hundred of them. Mm. Uh, it has been really interesting seeing and hearing their stories and where they are coming from and how um, they are going to move from a situation of hopelessness mm. to hope, giving the support we are going to give them. The other thing with, uh, with us is that we wanted to do things in a different way. We are always learning. We are, uh, one thing about Africa Skills Hub is that we are ever learning. We don't mm. assume that we've got it. So in this area, we're also looking at, okay, what can we do in order to also impact? We don't just want people to come and learn skills. Right, and they also want to impact their uh, their social aspect, life skills, and mm. all the various areas, mm. and understanding their struggles. So, what we have also done is that, in addition to that, we also have some training around sexual and gender-based violence. We have training around confidence. We have training around leadership, mm. uh, which for women is so key. So, all these aspects are included in the training. So, it's not just business training. Mm. So, we have the food training. We have the business training and we also have the emotive and emotional resilience and all those aspects that you know we as women we are very well known for when we come together and we look at issues that are damaging us one of the things with us women is that our general product productivity is linked to the issues that we carry and mm. uh, regardless of what anybody may say so sometimes people say oh okay why is this woman not being productive but maybe she has gone through uh, various experiences in her life growing up being rejected uh, undergoing various forms of violence you know rejection marginalization in all its forms as we, uh, we can we can discuss that forever and so we're also looking at that component as well so it's more of a holistic approach that we are now taking in terms of training people around entrepreneurship so their productivity is increased and we have some of the best lecturers and mm. best you know innovative people and we are looking at sessions where we come together we definitely we're going to look at the issue of the the food and we're looking at registration issues with the food and drugs board we are looking at packaging labeling all those issues and you know even the the, the space that they, they use so that they can become better and become more productive mm. what can they do or how can we support them in this covid area what have they identified that will make life easier for them but on the other hand you also have all the other aspects and we are looking very much forward to mentoring to training them to teaching them and really participating and understanding the context of where they are coming from so everyone who enters the incubator mm. and that goes and needs assessment we know that you are a food preparer and all of that. We also want to know who are you, what is your name, what are your aspirations, where do you want to be in five years, how can we support you on that journey? And so there's a lot of that going to be going on. And I, I mean, I, listening to the young women who have come and the registration and mm. their discussions, I, I can assure you that it's going to be a very fantastic. Thing. So uh, does that mean that um, registration is closed or it's still open? It's not. It's still open. We mm. are still open for uh, you know people can walk in or they can contact uh, us on our number. Mm. I want to take as many as possible. Even for those who are, are not able to be part of the the core program, we're also looking at ways that we can train them mm. and provide some support mm. and various issues for mm. them. So it's so. But we also are also. I was just we're, we're looking at the number of those who are uh, of of uh, physically challenged or disabled mm. people mm. who had applied, and mm. numbers were very mm. low. So mm. we we are appealing you know this program is for you mm. we want to see as many of them as possible participate as well this is for marginalized women who have not been included and we want to hit those numbers and see that come to life you know because that's what makes the difference mm. when you say women does it mean you have a specific target uh, um, age for even uh, females yes. or it's open for uh, all females of all ages okay. This is uh, particularly focused on females who are 18 to 35 mm-hmm. years old. 
And uh, that is what the donor stipulated, and they had done mm. their research. And finally, these are the women who are most affected, mm -hmm. and because they don't have the support in that area, it doesn't mean that we don't support other women. But for this particular program, we are mm -hmm. looking at 18 to 35 years. Okay, okay. And um, aside the age, what other um, 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 things would you be looking at uh, in selecting your beneficiaries? In selecting them, we are also looking at women who are struggling. Really, mm -hmm. I mean, this program is not for the those who are comfortable, and you know, yeah. I was talking to somebody and she was saying, No, oh, actually, COVID has been very good to her. Mm -hmm. and we have that, the, you oh, know, yes, yeah, some yeah. people have been, you mm -hmm. know, so those are there, but we actually want those who are marginalized, those who have not had a voice, those who are struggling, those who are despondent, and um, those who feel that maybe uh, they got married and they've lost through no fault of anybody, they've also lost their identity, they don't know how to get back into the workplace. And this is across board with women, you know, we have different times in our lives and then uh, we make choices. Mm -hmm. One after that, to getting back in the workforce is again another issue. So we are going to look at all those things in terms of present presenting yourself, working on a CV, all those life skills that are needed in addition to the business training, in addition to the food training as well. And um, when 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 the applicants um, give you information about themselves, are you going to do uh, independent investigations about? Uh, the information they've given you or are you just going to rely on uh, the information they've given you to 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 do the uh, selection i'm asking this because um, some may want to take advantage of it and in the end the uh, your target group would become you know less advantageous in okay. this uh, thank you that's a very valid point that you raised um, for every participant that uh, uh, is involved We'll visit their premises, we'll visit to actually ensure that they are doing what they said they will do. Um, it's also a requirement in terms of uh, uh, our uh, uh, the FDA mm -hmm. requirements to ensure that uh, this is what they do and that uh, they have the necessary registration or the necessary tools. So we'll be visiting everybody, so we have a background check that we're going to be doing, and that will happen on every participant in the incubator so that from the bottom we're able to establish a certain baseline so mm -hmm. we can track in terms of progress. And so they'll have to validate that information before we give them a final, final offer into the incubator. Mm. And and are you targeting women uh, living in the city of Tamale or you're looking at uh, the larger uh, region? And so? um, we actually, um, we're looking at those in the South Narigu area, okay. but we also open widely. Mm -hmm. If you are able to commit to a three month program mm -hmm. and you you can move to Tamale or you, are, you feel that uh, you can participate and give your all, you are very welcome to apply. You don't mm. discriminate. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so the training would um, happen for three months? Yes. Mm. Mm. And the elements of it, which is uh, mentoring and coaching, okay. uh, which will be towards the last month, but there's um, access to markets, access to finance, um, uh, business uh, analysis. We talk about the sexual and gender-based violence, all those things. Who are you as a woman? Your mm. religion, your spirituality, mm. um, your relationship, your sexual life, all of that. How does it affect um, who you are. So we have all those things ongoing, but we also have um, uh, e-volunteers because of COVID. Our partner uh, is uh, Canada World Youth, mm -hmm. and so the, there'll be 13 e about uh, 13 e-volunteers from there who also be mentoring and coaching the girls. But we also have coaches down. So the last month will be a little bit flexible mm -hmm. in terms, but the first two months will be intense in terms of the training and, mm -hmm. uh, and the outcomes that we are looking for. Mm -hmm. This project will be um, capital intensive. So are your beneficiaries required to pay a token or you just uh, absorb everything? Um, Global Affairs Canada, who is our donor, mm -hmm. and uh, Canada World Youth have made this available for free. Mm -hmm. And they really are keen on supporting young women. So nobody pays anything. However, we do not give out any cash awards. We mm -hmm. give the, the support directly. So after mm -hmm. we've done a needs analysis, uh, looking at the budget we have and what your needs are, we will find the best way possible to give you. Uh, a targeted intervention that will help move you from one stage mm -hmm. to the other stage. And that can look like some people need uh, to learn digital marketing, their labeling, their access to markets. Some people also need, you know, they need just to understand the rudiments of um, mm -hmm. of uh, business and understanding that. So all of that, we look at them specifically on a case-by-case -case basis, the support will be given. Because mm -hmm. no situation is, is a one-blanket situation where Somebody can walk in and say, oh, this is the problem for all of them. Give them this and, and give them that. And in the past, I know that uh, a lot of money has also been given, which has not amounted to anything. For this mm -hmm. one, if you are ready to work, we are ready to work with you. And even actually, the benefits that you will get will probably even surpass any mon monetary amount that you have. Because mm -hmm. when we look at the coaches, we look at the 
uh, the, the opportunities that we are presenting because even afterwards you get a chance to also present some of your products on uh, what we call it, we are doing an online showcase. Mm, that would have been my next question. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask um, um, what kind of support you give to the beneficiaries even after uh, the entire duration of the oh. training. Okay. This particular program is unique in the sense that uh, usually we do a lot of training, we do a lot of uh, uh, what we call impact initiatives, and mm. then after that, what's next? Yeah. We all know the problem generally, not just for Tamale, for mm. Africa in general, has been access to markets. Mm. You know, you have all these people who are doing fantastic things. And so one of the things that the incubator is also looking at is the issue of diversification. Right? If you are doing Zincom, everybody's doing Zincom. How mm. can we now look at various products that we can infuse or increase? Everything's just a little bit different. Somebody yeah. said, oh, why do we have to change? Because we, we have the demand for it. But it's time for Africa to leapfrog into the future. Yeah. I remember once when I first went to Finland and I stopped at a, a bakery on the way to the airport, my host mm -hmm. and I. And there were 60 something varieties of bread. So that also creates industry, diversity along the value chains, you mm. know, where there's so many things to pick from. So sometimes business people, so people are not buying. It's not that. It's just that you have, you go on one street or you go to one and everybody's selling the same thing, the same shop. We need to start looking at that critically as Africans because that is important for people who want to access our markets. You know, mm. there's so much choice. If we are doing share butter, we're all doing share butter in the same way. Yeah. And that is uh, gradually become a problem. So that, that's where the issue of innovation comes in. So we are looking afterwards and looking at the, the products. If they pass, uh, what we, we have suggested and they do very well and they mm. are well packaged and they're able to meet the, the, the international standards. We're also looking at a, a type of, I won't say a mall, but a type of online showcase where we'll be presenting them to the world and promoting them and giving people, letting people know that their products are out there. And we're also looking at fairs, exhibition, etc., mm. etc., and getting these young girls involved so they, c they can get the access to markets that they want. Mm. 90.5 FM, uh, we have an, an exclusive interaction with our friends from the Africa Skills Hub, uh, specifically uh, having a conversation around their women, uh, entrepreneurship, and um, women entrepreneurship and livelihood initiative, uh, really. And uh, in the studio with us this morning is uh, Ankh Rashid and uh, Auntie Anna too. Um, Auntie, now let's uh, look at the duration of um, this project. Um, are they going to be in phases or just do it once? Okay. Um, the vision is to increase uh, the number of beneficiaries gradually. This is a mm. pilot project. Okay. And we are hoping that uh, it will get renewed mm -hmm. and that we are looking at also looking at uh, increasing it and going more towards advanced stages. There are a lot of things that have been done in the area of food. So once we move beyond the basic level, mm -hmm. we're also looking at when we can also have another level where we are looking at more of the technology aspect. So now AI, you know, you can create food and you can create wonderful designs in AI. Within food, we are, uh, there's baking, mm -hmm. there's the beverages, there's, you know, so segmenting and having further specialization in that area. But we're also looking at Africa Skills Hub. We are constantly trying to unearth talent. And we do realize not everybody wants to be a food entrepreneur. This may be the beginning. So we're also looking at other in industries, especially um, industries where women have not had a lot of uh, participation mm -hmm. for various reasons. And we're also looking again at the inclusive elements, whether disability and various types of women and different kinds of marginalized people participating. So we are looking beyond the food, also looking at various other incubators. And we're also hoping that uh, across the north, the, whole, mm -hmm. the entire mm -hmm. uh, north, and upper, you know, we'll be able to have very specific incubators that address the needs of the people there, uh, where you don't necessarily, depending on the target group, you don't necessarily are asking for them to be so educated, but mm. they actually be able to train to do a skill or something that they can provide uh, provide benefits to their community and also at the same time earn them an income. Mm, 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 mm. And um, up north here, and I'm sure um, it's not just limited here, mm. um, women are um some women largely are under the control of their husbands mm. right and there may be an applicant or a beneficiary who is really interested in uh, the program but the difficulty may be how to uh, get her husband's approval uh, to attend the training workshop uh, do you look at her stepping in uh, to assist in such women who may fall within um, the brackets you are looking at, mm. but the only difficulty may be uh, their husbands. Okay. 
Yes, we are. We actually have some licensed uh, local licensed counselors mm -hmm. who are able to do that uh, that work. And what we are looking at is we are not here to break up families. We are not here to bring a new orientation. All we are trying to do is to understand the dynamics. Mm -hmm. And from what I we have understood so far is that uh, yes, there's this control over men, but it's also linked to the the time, mm -hmm. the amount of work, their duties in the home, etc. Yeah. So we have looked at it and tailored it where we are going to look at the needs of the participants and tailor it to specific times. So if evening is best for them, mm -hmm. that is when they come in. If it is daytime or morning, etc., we are not trying to take them away from what they are doing. It is mm -hmm. a pandemic. Everybody's mm -hmm. hustling. So mm -hmm. it is not about that, but finding something that suits them in a way. So yes, we are very open to... Actually, we like it when people are coming to apply and they come with their husbands because mm -hmm. sometimes it's good for their husbands yeah. to understand you know, that this is going to be for the benefit of their wife, for the family, which then mm -hmm. impacts the family, impacts decision-making around the children, etc., etc. And I've, I've found so far the men who have come have been very, very... Uh, you know, once they understand what it is, and mm -hmm. you know, they are very, very supportive and allow their women to come. But yes, we are open to having that discussion. I think sometimes it's fear that causes us to yeah. sometimes reject something. We don't understand it. But we are very open to dialoguing, going. Yesterday, I went home to uh, with a, a, a girl to meet her family. Hers wasn't her husband per se. But her family were a little bit, you know, what is all this about? Are you mm. going to be safe? Mm. Etc. Etc. And we have ensured as well that the girls who are coming have the maximum safety and get into where they are coming and that we protect and create a safe space for them. So once they are aware of that, then they, they, they and know that it's not going to be forever. It's only for three months, you know, they are, mm. then they, they can actually come and be very supportive. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Fantastic. And um, finally, <laughs> finally from me, um, in the long run, what would be the uh, benefits to our society, especially uh, you are looking at San Arugu municipality, uh, what would be the benefits uh, in the long run to the people of San Arugu? Okay, as you know, uh, Dr. Pediagri said, when you educate a woman, you educate a nation. Uh, women uh, bear a lot of responsibility mm -hmm. around the, the home, around the children especially, etc. So when you are a country or a continent where women are serving, then you're actually missing out on half of your workforce. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. This is not about marriage or not marriage, etc., etc. Women have so much potential that needs to be unleashed, which will contribute to our national development. And uh, even with the men, there are so many things and so many burdens that they carry yeah. that if the women are educated, they are able to come up and where you don't have this situation where the man is bearing the brunt mm -hmm. of all the finances and all the decision-making in the house. And women are equally able to work. So I think that the time has come and it has been long overdue for women mm -hmm. to arise and shine. So what we are hoping to do is that uh, in the process, like we said, food is the target, but the process is also the transformation mindset, you mm -hmm. understand? Understanding that you, whoever you are, wherever you've come from, it doesn't matter whether your family had money or whether you, they didn't, you can become a Michelle Obama, you can become an Oprah Winfrey, you can become a Gifty Afeni Dazi. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you choose to do and the opportunities, uh, as long as you are given the opportunities and you learn how to seize them. So I think that uh, for the benefit of the general society, it is, it is for me, I'm passionate about raising a, a, a whole generation of women who know what they want, who are gifted in various areas. You know, Africa is now moving into the industrial age mm -hmm. and we cannot afford to be left behind because uh, our story cannot always be, oh, uh, well, the face of a woman is poverty. The face of a woman is, is, is poverty. The world has moved on beyond that. It's time for us to arise and come into our queen. So I think this is the beginning and I think a lot of people are doing a lot of amazing things, people mm -hmm. like yourselves etc. In, ter in terms of featuring women. You know, one of the things, we've talked a lot about this women's empowerment and how we are going to bring women. Uh, but I've not looked at specific things that they should be doing. doing There's yeah. a lot, especially about the futuristic careers. You know, mm. we know that artificial intelligence, mm. all the internet of things, are, that it is the rage. Mm. If you're going to have a job in the next few years, you have to have specialized in those areas. And so, we also need to arise to meet that so that our story is not always the same mm -hmm. over and over and over again. One thing I'll say with Africa Skills Hub, that is what we see. We see the power of the women. We've led so many trainings across the country from Takradi to Accra, etc., etc. We've really been able to, I'm not saying we have it all, but we've been able mm -hmm. to identify the issues that various people, groups and various areas need. So we tailor, we prepare uh, programs that are meet them, their, their needs are tailor me. So one mm. of the places we had a lot of success in is the, the issue of digital skills. Mm. This applies to you, whether you're a woman or a man or whatever it is. It is essential that you have this. What does this do? It makes you competitive. Mm. You know, when you go and uh, apply for a job and you have those skills versus the other person who also has the same skills. Mm. This is because this is what we need to work for the future. So we're not being left out. So I think that the benefits of the country are going to be immense. I think mm. more and more people should create women-led hubs mm. that focuses on women and their issues specifically and be able to say in a few years that, oh, because of me or because of this initiative that we took, many women were able to uh, feel that their voices were being heard, that they could express themselves, that they could become whoever they were. They can pull out of their despondency and they can stop this issue of, oh, 
my only my only access to life or to opportunities is when I'm married. Because mm. the reality is that uh, I am not married. The reality is that uh, not everybody's going to get married. No. Life doesn't work that way. Yeah. No matter how good or, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to wait till you get married? Mm. Or are you going to just rise and look at the opportunities and the talents that you have mm. and take opportunities? So Fantastic. And uh, that's what we're going to do for great, them. Great, great. And uh, where do we locate your office uh, here in Tamale? Okay. I think um, I would defer that to Uncle uh, Rashid. Uncle Rashid. So he can <laughs> proper yeah. directions yeah. before I go and tell somebody. Yeah, Uncle Rashid. Uh, um, Tell us um, where we can uh, locate the office and how we can uh, contact uh, you. Oh, okay. So our office is located at IP Junction. I believe you know IP Junction, you know? Uh, around Bef before Gariba Lodge. Oh, yes. Yeah. There's one yeah. junction yeah. on your yeah. left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So mm. when you just take that junction, uh, we are put putting up signages Towards uh, Naluru Estate. Towards Naluru Estate. Yeah. Uh, then you see our signages leading mm. to our office. Mm. Uh, we, we, we are just new, so yeah. being honest, our signages will be put up today mm. so that to help people with direction. Uh, when it comes so in case when you just get to ip junction mm -hmm. uh and you're looking for office i mean i not to mention that uh we still have um interviews the ongoing. ip junction is just um i mean the ip building itself is yes. the building mm -hmm. just before farm milk yes before farm milk yeah. yes yeah. that's just it before